Hello, my name is Max Montrose, president of the Trichome Institute, and this video is all about the Dope Cup 2016 in Oregon that we just got back from judging. Um, the Cannabis Cup was awesome, and the quality of the cannabis blew us away. Um, no doubt, Oregon has some fire, very clean. Uh, packaging was impeccable, products were impeccable. Um, flour, concentrates, edibles, everything across the board was amazing. Oregon, you guys kill it in the industry. You guys are doing a really great job. Um, this Cannabis Cup was very different from most other Cannabis Cups. Um, this is pretty much like the first legitimate Cannabis Cup. And so this video is about what uh, makes Cannabis Cups illegitimate and what makes this Cannabis legitimate. We're also going to talk about what makes uh, putting on a Cannabis Cup complicated and why judging Cannabis Cups is complicated. We're going to talk a little bit about the judging process, um, and then we'll let you know where you can find all of the tag scores uh, for all of the entries for the Dope Cup Oregon 2016. So, so before we can really get into um, legit judging, we're going to talk about what makes most cannabis cups um, not really legitimate whatsoever. Um, at the end of the day, there are now a ton of different types of cannabis cups and by different companies uh, run in different states and different countries all over the place, and they are a really big deal. Um, they're a big deal because the one of the biggest driving forces for product differentiation in this industry is proving that you have the best product, the uh, best quality. Um, it's been a part of our culture since um, the very beginning within the black market, um, and it's still uh, very ripe today. Um, but the people who judge these cups are not people who take the time to research cannabis quality. Um, usually they're people who have been growing for a really long time or smoking for a really long time. And usually they're much better at um, smoking weed or growing weed than studying a scientific, measurable, um, qualitative and quantitative thing uh, within your analysis that you can prove is objective. Um, most people in our industry just don't do that. Um, that's one of many things that the Trichome Institute does do. And so instead of just, you know, smoking some weed and seeing how it made us feel, and then while we're intoxicated, uh, judge the process even, even more so, um, that just doesn't make sense. Um, and so there's never been a standard for um, who these judges are and what their qualifications are. And there's also never been a standard platform that these judges um, use across the board that simultaneously has a scientific basis that is not subjective. Um, that's never happened before except for the Dope Cup uh, 2016 Oregon was the first. Um, and so now let's talk about what makes a cannabis cup legitimate. So we produced the, the cannabis quality certification that we call TAG. And TAG stands for Trichome Assurance Grade or grading. And essentially what we have done is, well, first of all, you, nobody can just become a tagger. You have to first become a level one, two, and three certified interpreter. And if you don't know uh, what qualifies an interpreter at those levels, you should go to our website, check out the interpreting tour, and you can find out what qualifies these people um, who, who have reached these expert levels. But essentially, we start with a group of experts who have all been highly trained and actually know what they're talking about. Um, so this group of experts, um, uh, these uh, level three certified interpreters, cannabis sommeliers, um, use a standard operating procedure where we have different measurements for the different objective, measurable uh, qualities of cannabis. And so we use the same tools in rulers to gauge things like the trichome health, trichome ripeness, style and stigma health and ripeness. Uh, we look for insects, hermaphrodites, uh, bananas, which are technically called anthers, um, we look for faulty bud structure. We look for um, uh, signs of age, molds, funguses, all sorts of things that are either positive qualities or negative qualities that we can visually observe. And we observe them from afar as well as really up close. Um, in fact, every single sample goes through um, microscopic photography twice. 
um, and we'll get a little bit more into that. But uh, outside of the visual characteristics, there's also this olfactory aspect to cannabis quality. Um, we can actually smell when things are unflushed. And uh, when I was speaking with one of the growers who entered in the cup, um, at the cup, um, you know, I, he asked me to smell his product. I smelled it and I could automatically smell salts. And I asked him about his flushing process and his flushing process sounded really good. Um, so that's when I asked if he, he was growing in only cocoa with synthetic nutrients and he said, wow, how do you know? It's because we can really smell how salty your cannabis is if you grow in those ways or if you don't flush properly. Um, as well as we can also tell uh, by smell the depth of pungency, the age of the myrcene, which lubricates the blood-brain barrier to allow uh, Delta-9 bioavailability in the brain in the first place, we can smell how much of that myrcene is there or not uh, based on the age. And myrcene degrades pretty quick uh, by up to 53% in 90 days specifically. Um, and then outside of that, what we can smell is we can smell certain pharmacies um, within your variety types. When we smell uh, terpenoline and linalool, or um, more so terpenoline and lemonine, um, we know that that's going to be a sativa dominant hybrid because the pharmacology of those terpenes um, produces those effects in the human body, uh, smoked or when they're smelled. Um, and so we can tell a lot from our sense of smell. And this type of detailed training you can get uh, in Denver, Colorado with live uh, samples of flour uh, with our interpreting classes, which people actually fly in from every corner of the globe to come take. Um, only place in the world you can take these classes. So uh, after our visual, we also have a consumption part. You can't judge a cannabis cup without using some cannabis, and we're pretty good at doing that too. Um, the thing is, is that we go through, you know, 90% of the test and all of your samples, which went through at least five different people's hands at, um, before the final grade was determined, um, all of that work is done sober. We're not using microscopes and computers and SOPs intoxicated and expecting that we're gonna give you guys quality reporting. So we do all of that uh, heavy scientific stuff in one grouping section and then we have our consumption section uh, section of the test afterwards and we do that consecutively so it's kind of like a smoke off um, but when we do that we're not grading how high we get so many people wonder well you know how can you grade how good the weed is 10, 10 hits down because aren't you already stoned by your third hit and it's like yeah we're intoxicated on THC um, we're still clear-headed because we have really high tolerances. Um, but no, I'm not seeing if your weed got me high or not. Of course your weed's gonna get me high, unless it's a high CBD variety. I don't care if it gets me high, it's gonna get me high. The question is, is did you flush it well? Is it gonna crackle and sparkle in the bowl when I smoke it? What's the consistency of the ash? Um, did it make my throat burn? Do you know what you're doing <laughs> is what we're looking for when we smoke your cannabis. And those are all things that are a part of our SOP that we judge, um, which also come, come out accurate, okay? And so what happens is we enter these numeric values from this SOP, from these qualitative um, measurable factors of cannabis, um, and then we enter it in the computer, and then the computer actually grades in ways the different math values based on the level of importance of what quality means within cannabis, for uh, flour specifically, um, also in concentrates, and we'll talk about edibles later. Um, and so once you get a final numeric grade and value, isn't that still subjective? It is, unless you use inter-rater reliability, which means two independent, double-blind people grade the same sample and come up with the same numeric value consistently every time, and that's what we do. Um, we double blind grade every sample and uh, both of the judges come up with the same answer. And so that's how the tag works, but you have to be highly trained to be able to uh, grade one flower and get the exact same grade from someone else uh, grading it next to you or in a different room or something like that. 
um, we're just really, really good at doing that. And so, uh, yes, there's going to be a uh, tagged flower available in dispensaries. There already is in certain locations, and we are working with wholesale platforms and other technologies to tell people where high-quality flower is that goes through this type of testing. Um, we also added a layer of chemotyping to the tag score, which means your cannabinoid and terpene scores. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people think that the highest THC wins. It only wins in the high THC category. That's the only time high THC wins. Just because your cannabis has a lot of THC in it doesn't mean it's good. Um, you could have the most THC and the most diverse terpene profile and your weed could still be completely unflushed, full of spider mites with webs, their fecal matter, and exoskeletons all over in that. And yes, we did find all of that in um, a few of the flowers that were submitted in this cannabis cup. Um, and people were marked down for that. Um, and so that's why chemotyping doesn't equate to quality. You can't just use chemotyping uh, in a cannabis cup doesn't work. Um, you need a quality certification and that would be a tag score which is operated by cannabis experts who are designed to do this type of work in the first place. Um, that's why we're really proud to do this work at the Tricom Institute. So <clears throat> uh, I hope you understand tagging and I hope uh, it makes a little bit more sense and I hope you enjoy that this is how um, your flowers were graded this time. So uh, one thing that makes judging cannabis cups really difficult is <laughs> the the quagmire that our industry is still in. Um, the strain name dilemma is very real, okay? Um, for example, before regulation, when I was buying cannabis um, from the streets to retail it to uh, patients because there was no model before that, uh, way back in the day, people would try to sell me four different types of island sweet skunk in the same day, and they would be four completely different types of flower. Smelled different, looked different, felt different. Um, I've probably seen a hundred different types of Girl Scout cookies. Um, I just released a video with Leaf Buyer and 420 Science recently. I think you can see in our video gallery on our website uh, where I went Blue Dream secret shopping and analyzed the differences between all the Blue Dream streams I found. There's, a, there's even a dispensary here in Colorado who sells four different types of Blue Dream all at the same store. And you're like, what does that mean, four different types of Blue Dream? It's not even Blue Dream. Or one of them is and the other three aren't. And so this whole idea that people are so religiously connected to their strain name and what that equates to is really nutty because when you access those websites that use strain names online, um, they're not true and there's not, they're, they're never going to be true because you have cannabis morphology. Even if you did have an original Blue Dream from California, by the time you bring it to Oregon, it's going to be different. And by the time you grow it indoors in Colorado with a different style of lighting and a different style of nutrients and almost a different everything, you're going to produce a different plant. These things evolve really quick, cannabis especially. Um, so it's not really possible, which is why strain names should just not be taken as seriously as they are currently. Um, the other thing is none of these are strains. They're all variety types. Um, strains are subspecies of species. And the thing is, is we're talking about indica and sativa and, you know, so many people, people have already called because they, you know, their strain was, you know, in the wrong category or this or that. It's like, you know, listen, I hate to break it to you, but when we were grading the indica category, we were all sitting around laughing at how many awesome sativas were in this category. And it's just like, even growers who've been growing for 20 years or dispensary owners who really know what they're doing, these genetics have been crisscrossed, they've been hybridized, and at the end of the day, the terms indica and sativa right now really mean and should mean how the plant makes you feel, not the strain or species the plant is because they're really not indicas or sativas. Um, and this is where things can kind of get confusing. Um, if you come to class, you'll learn a whole lot more, but at the end of the day, just a little brief for you, uh, the very first cannabis plant to exist um, was uh, primordial, um, ancestral, pituitive, Cannabasia cannabis ruderalis. And that species created two other species, indica and sativa, 
and these species are heirlooms, uh, land race genetics. And they have produced subspecies over the times, which are like the strains of these species. Everything that's in the industry is hybridized probably 10 times over, or at least a, a couple of times, um, and has evolved from moving from its original geography in the first place with cannabis morphology. And so um, we actually today have a lot of genomic and chemotypical evidence that says it's very possible that sativas are strictly hemp, plants that don't even um, get you intoxicated that are more fiber based. We have a lot of information about that now. And so really there should be a category, there should be categories that are more intelligent than indica and sativa at this point because it's so confusing. Um, and really what we're talking about is plants that are really tall, that have really long nodal spacing between them, that have really thin leaf fingers, that get you high and not stoned, the thing that everybody thinks is a sativa, we have a ton of genomic evidence to support that we should really be calling that plant an NLD, a narrow leaf drug, which is an indica species, subspecies indica. And the one with the fat leaves that has a shorter plant with tighter internodal spacing, um, that we know to be indica is an indica subspecies afghanica um, and indica even has a hemp uh, subspecies as well which is a blh a broadleaf hemp type um, and that would be an indica species subspecies chinensis and so um, just know that we never grade based on the strain name and we don't associate your strain name to the strain category that you put it in because this process was more than double blind, it was triple blind. We could not know the strain name, the grower, or the dispensary. Every flower came to us with a numeric code. It was just placed in the category it was placed in. And unfortunately, a lot of flowers were placed in the wrong category. We didn't kick you out. Uh, we might have docked off just a few points for um, that being like a technical error, but we pretty much let it go uh, overall because it's such a complicated issue that is doesn't just happen once or twice. Almost 25, 30% of all of the entries, um, you know, could have been argued, well, you know, people argued, well, it's a sativa and really it's an indica and an indica and really it's a sativa. And at the end of the day, um, we're not grading its genes. We're grading the quality of the flower that was in front of us. And your flowers went through five different human beings' hands. Um, it was went through microscopic photography twice. The term fine tooth comb, um, it works really well here because every sample did go through a fine tooth comb. Same thing with uh, the uh, concentrates. Um, so many concentrates that were entered in the shatter category weren't even shatters. They were butters. Um, and so many things in the live resin category wasn't live resin. It was shatter. <laughs> or... Okay, I want can to you get open the packaging, video, Jeffrey? Everybody was to Take it out. Let's see what it looks like. Have you looked at it yet? No. no. Let's look. Oh, it seems nice, but it seems a little taffy. Like, I feel like it's going to stick when I open the paper up. It's not the greatest. Yep, that, yeah. is, that is butter, that is sugary. Uh, Starting to nucleate. They call that lipstick on a pig. <laughs> yeah. Can we see it under the light? Yeah. It's it smells great, but that is just buttering yeah, out. It's nucleating. I'll tell you when to do it. And because it's nucleating, there's a shitload of terpenes just right, rolling one, off of this thing, which yeah. is why it smells so nice. It's pretty damn stinky. Holy shit. It smells like, uh, so you know, like live turps. It's not where it's supposed to be. Yeah, puppy. More of a live resin than it's... It was shatter, <laughs> or it was uh, nucleating uh, sugar, or these other things. And so, um, you know, we're developing standards and models so that there can be a discussion of legitimacy. 
Um, in fact, our hash and concentrate wheel is just about to come out. And it tells you the potency, the viscosity, the purity, the color, and the extraction method um, for 10 different types of hash and concentrates. Bubble, solventless, oil, wax, shatter, rosin, or that was live resin, rosin, distillate. So in due time, sign up at Tricome Institute's uh, monthly email listing to know when these tools will be out and when our more courses are coming out. Um, and so, let's see. Uh, when you guys look at your scores, um, th the reason why there's no business attached to the tag score or a grower or a strain name is one, we were kept from all that information, so we still don't really know who we uh, graded for unless you've won already. Um, and two, um, when we publish these scores, for those of you who you know didn't know that you had a fungus gnat or mold or spider mites in your flower, um, we're not out here to uh, scare your customers off. We're here to grade quality flower and to help celebrate the highest quality flower. Um, we're not here to point the finger at anybody, which is why we're not going to. So um, that's why all of the people who entered this cup, they know who they are. They have their codes, and they'll be able to see uh, their scores and compare their scores uh, compared to other scores. Um, and just know that because we had over 200 things to analyze, we didn't have as much time to you know write a whole full in-depth report specifically on your flower, especially if once we graded it, we knew it wasn't um, going to win. Uh, we put as much information in there as possible, but um, it still took five of us over five days to grade all of this stuff uh, within the process that we did. And so um, I hope that you can respect and understand um, how and why those scores are uh, worked out in that way. So to find your scores, you can go to trichomainstitute.com. Go to interpreting, and under interpreting, there is a uh, button for tag, and if you go to tag, um, first of all, you can look at tag a little bit more and better understand it, and um, there you can, there's a button right in the home page where you can find the Dope Cup uh, results 2016 Oregon. I wanted to thank Dope Magazine so much for taking a stand in this industry, um, wanting to improve legitimacy, uh, improve quality flour and concentrates and products and help celebrate people who uh, produce the best products and who do the right thing by judging this competition in the right way with legitimacy. Um, this is huge and this should start a revolution for people better understanding what their products are and how they work and how, well, what the quality is. This, there's a huge conversation to be had in the cannabis industry today. So Dope, thank you so much for this opportunity. We can't wait to tag more Cannabis Cups with you in the future. Uh, Oregon, seriously, you guys rock. Everybody who I met at the Dope Cup was awesome. Um, everybody has a really good attitude over there and your products are the shit. I really enjoyed them a lot. I can't wait to come back to Oregon and uh, hang out and smoke some more weed with all you guys. So um, thanks so much. Uh, check us out. Um, our classes, we have some online classes, other things. If you want to come get some Tricom Institute education or if you want to become an interpreter and start helping us judge other cannabis cups around the world. From Tricom Institute, my name is Max Montrose. Thanks.
the first business that we do is really in-depth cannabis education, both online, in person, um, out of state, and even license education to other cannabis schools. I help the state of Colorado write the Responsible Vendor Program, uh, which is now in our code M408R407. Um, and we will have a national version of this available online in just a little bit. Um, but we are licensed by the state of Colorado, the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment, and the Marijuana Enforcement Division to license people and businesses in the cannabis industry as responsible vendors, which gives people layers of protection from the Marijuana Enforcement Division, as well as a few other things. Um, we also just recently published the Bible of all cannabis products. Um, so many people are confused on where these products come from, how they're made, how they work in the human body. Uh, if anything you could ever want to know about all types of hash, concentrates, edibles, how they affect people in the human body, um, sublinguals, tinctures, transdermals, positive dabbing, bad dabbing, uh, time to effects and all that good stuff is all found here. Um, you can take these classes in Colorado from Hemp Temps University um, and uh, get your student workbooks, which is a knowledge enforcement technology or you can actually take these courses online at thcuniversity.org, uh, um, which are live and available now. Um, outside of writing cannabis education and curriculum, we do a lot of uh, science and research. Um, we're doing some research on cannabis uh, genomics and chemotyping of ruderalis right now, which we'll have um, weekly updates for coming pretty soon. Um, many of you know we also run the Cannabis Sommelier Program. We're the only company that runs the Cannabis Sommelier Program. Um, and what we do is we teach people how to see and smell the psychotropic differences between cannabis variety types as well as a full flower dissection. So we have a four-hour course in Colorado with over 70 types of cannabis that we bring to class so that you can smell unflushed cannabis, powdery mildew, botrytis scenario, all the molds, bugs, funguses, and the spectrum of psychoactivity, which goes very far and beyond indica and sativa. So we produce these little tools that can help people get around the strain name dilemma. doesn't really matter what it's called. What matters more is how you assess the quality of it and what it is, uh, how it's going to affect you when you consume it. So we have these cool tools that achieve those uh, goals. Um, this is our interpreting loop. So you can use this tool to measure where in your nose you smell. The flower, the pistil structure, and bud structure will actually gauge the variety type effect. The highest qualities and acceptable qualities of flower, unacceptable visual and odor characteristics, as well as the terpene profiles that you're smelling and the pharmacology of those smells when you smoke them. Um, and then, of course, the guidebook breaks all of this down as well. Um, talks about the strain name dilemma, uh, where cannabis plants come from, how they work, how to identify different plant types, all the different molds, bugs, funguses, full dissection, and then the process for seeing and smelling cannabis variety types uh, and their psychotropic effects. And so with that,